Welcome to Weld.com. Have Mr. Hamar Gio from Weld Tube South Coast Welding Academy from Houston today, and we're going to do a little discussion here about. Uh, actually, we're going to get into a little argument here about. Yes, we what's are. up? You know, we yeah. get these comments: root face, land, however you want to describe it, versus feathered edge. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. Um, exactly. But every fitting comes in with a face already mm -hmm. machined on it. Exactly. You know? What do you I've so? Seen you know, do, do they grind them all off? You know, I mean, that's that's the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not about all that time and everything, but just a standard fit up. I like to prep the pipe, and for me, I've always used like a sixteenth to three thirty-two, yeah. just something because it that mass to me is like that chill effect, and it helps me control. Uh, the amount of penetration. I like that reinforcement. I understand. I understand so, that for sure. So you, you're more of the feathered edge type I'm, guy. I'm I mean. more of the, the feathered edge. So like when it comes to stick welding or anything like that, I do use a landing, you know, 16 to 332. But when it comes to hilly arc, in my experience, you know, just the, the old timers that, that taught me as well, they say no land. But at the end of the day, uh, land versus no land, we're about to check it out right now. We're about to see, give it a test. But when I see this, if it's sharp here, I feel like when I burn, you know, when I back feed, it, it hits the walls regardless, you know. But for a landing, sometimes that my personal uh, preference when I see it, when I'm welding, it doesn't hit the walls as much, right? It stays on the landing. Maybe I'm not running hot enough, you know. So who knows? But at the end of the day, me personally, I just like no land. But we're going to put them to the test. So, so do that. does it matter on alloy carbon steel versus stainless do you, you you just always feathered edge always feathered edge uh any if i'm willing hilly arc um like i said stick mig flux core whatever the case may be i do use a landing but for carbon steel alloys uh Hasteloy, mono whatever the case may be i use no landing at all cool so dip keyhole back feet, cool. same thing so let's prep some <laughs> tubes here uh, I'll clean the inside, normal, yeah, and uh, we'll do a we'll do a face on half of it, and we'll leave uh, we'll no, leave the other yeah, face no uh, feathered, feathered edge, edge sharp. Okay, well, get up. some gear on. Let's do let's it. Let's do it. All right, Mr. Mar, got you all cleaned up here, inside Beautiful. Beautiful. and out. Didn't really get into the chew that mill scale off of there, but I did get it back just a little bit. But the main thing we were talking about was <clears throat> I want to. You know, I'm gonna do my thing like I norm normally have. One sixteenth, three thirty second. That's not three thirty second. That's that's just a sixteenth of root face yeah. or land. By technically, there. left you with the feathered edge. That's on my side. Uh, right now we're just gonna. I've got one bridge tack or I've got one tack down in there at twelve o'clock, and I'm just gonna kind of adjust fit, Most give definitely. you what you want. Definitely. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. And I believe we we're gonna do this in six G. 6G position. Okay, I figure out get these boys situated on the camera angle so they can see the inside of this route. But uh, you know, again, I, we've been through this hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. Me and you, I know we have. And of course, you always get these different fits. Some mm -hmm. shrink, some don't. Most definitely. Most definitely. But the whole deal is, you know, you're on sharp feathered edge. Absolutely no root face. I'm on the 116th to 332 face or whatever so uh, multiple ways to go at this um, I like to do that little back feed thing especially mm -hmm. coming off the bottom exactly. always like always like mine I don't want anything in the bottom mm -hmm. anything I, you know unless there's a, a fit tack down there or something to keep exactly. it from slamming shut if it's exactly. a lot of weight on it or something um, but I just want it all open so that I can see you Very know nice. so I've always kind of put mine at 12 10 and 2 and left this whole yeah, thing whole bottom open. right and you don't you do a, you do a two tack thing sometimes don't yeah, you yeah what i like to do when i fit this up like you know bob has his personal preference which works as well but me personally i like to just throw two bridge tacks here leave the bottom open and the top open uh only so, because so your bridge tacks being at three and nine three and nine and then having six and twelve uh, six and twelve uh open so oh, okay. What I do is I okay. Quarter, I quarter so it. since they're bridge tacks, you're not having to bump into them. Exactly. Let's tie in. So I break them off. Just one time. It's right. Two. Yeah. And then you're up and going. Exactly. Okay. Well, what kind of gap we got here, brother? Five thirty-two. Um, I like the loose. I like the loose five thirty-two. I like the loose five thirty-two three sixteenths. Nice. You know. 
Nice. And uh, I just feel more comfortable with it so I can feed the eighth inch wire. We got, is this eighth? Did that's you? One eighth. How do you know? Do you it's check it? I can smell it. Yep, that's eight. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm gonna check this out. I'm check this out. Uh, it's a uh, uh, loose 532, or it's ER70S6. Mm -hmm. All right. And what amps are we running? Between 110, uh, 20? this type fit you're probably going to be slightly lower because you're on the feathered edge mm -hmm. uh i'm going to guess and say i'm gonna be running about 85 90. Okay. possibly i don't know check it while i'm going okay. and we'll we'll see all right so well let's go ahead and tack this up in a 6g position and go to town all right let's all do right. it sounds it okay hamara i got you uh i went we went ahead and tacked up here we did your bridge tack over here on this side um, you like the gas lens. Yes, you sir. like the free hand. I noticed yes, you've got that technique where you're resting three fingers on yes, there. Sir. Hey, I've been doing that, by the way, and it's comfortable. It's comfortable. I've always been that, you know, I did that one thumb thing, and, and uh, I get up a little ways, and I just rest the cup in there and walk away. But I've uh, done that a couple times, and it's, it's really pretty cool. Uh, we're running off the Dynasty today. We've got you set up at 110 amps, 8th inch E3 tungsten. We've got uh, about 15 cubic feet an hour. So, what else? Turn and burn? Turn and burn. All Three right. 16s gap, uh, no landing uh, on my side. I'm gonna start at six o'clock. Gonna stop around nine o'clock right here. I got a bridge tech on this side. And uh, after that, uh, try to finish it out or I'm gonna let Bob take over. He's gonna do his side and we'll just quarter it out and then we'll go from there. Uh, but at the end of the day, let's see what it does. Let's do it. Let's do it. So right now I'm running at 110 amps, just like Bob put me on. I have no landing at all. Hitting both walls. Slowly feeding. It's all about constant feed. Constant feed. Using that filler wire as a heat sink. Yes, sir. Drawing that reinforcement on the inside. Yes, That's what sir. I always I'm like always to pushing. see is reinforcement on the bottom side. Now, I like to run at 110 amps, but it's all preference, guys. You know, 90 amps, whether it be 100 amps, whatever the case may be, whatever's most comfortable for you. That's what you do. Amar, have you ever had those gaps where you got to kind of chase the wire back and forth? Oh, and yeah, brother. <laughs> make sure I don't, you... I don't miss those. Ah. And when you're feeding this filler wire, okay, don't be too forceful with it. Be light with it, okay? Because if you be forceful, you're going to push too much, you're going to get cold wire or chop wire, whatever y'all want to call it. But getting close to the bridge tag. Right now I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here at the bridge. I'm gonna let Bob take over because we, it's a little fit up adjustment we did, so I'm gonna stop right here. Thing up, boy. Nice. Okay, um, man, you did a really good run on there. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, uh, sir. I, was kind of, I noticed, you know, that feathered edge is like weeping up on that tall side, kind of cutting, but. Mm -hmm. put that wire in there and it's like a heat sink and you got it filled in there so you were coming off here like like your three fingers yeah three fingers uh index finger and thumb over all right i come all the way through so okay. but uh like i said when i use the uh, no landing at all you saw that i was just using that fill rod to make that reinforcement it was a constant yeah. push Constant I, I kind of yeah. do the same thing. I'm not pushing, and I think you mentioned keep it light. Yeah, keep you know, it light. Where it's just yes. balanced on the mm -hmm. leading edge. I think that's what a lot of people do. I kind of do the same thing. I like to do that leading edge thing. Again, I have like a 1 16th 
root face, mm -hmm. which is no big deal. And yeah, I've actually I mean, welded them heavier than that. Uh, again, you know, with that good gap in there. But I went ahead and switched back over to a standard collet. Uh, Why is that, Bob? I just, you know, here's what I like to do on coming off the, you, you use the three fingers. Yes, sir. I'm going to use one thumb and, and I'm going to kind of come up here a little bit until I feel comfortable. All right. And then I go ahead and rest the cup in here. And, and, and then walk away. Which makes sense, brother. Makes sense. I mean, you know, and then comfortable, I. Comfortable, comfortable. Yeah, and then I'll change up to uh, the larger diameter cups, even the gas lens when I come out of it. Just, just one of those deals, you know. Yeah, most definitely. Whatever, wherever. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I don't have anything in the way. No, sir. So we just kind of we we did our thing. You got your bridge tack yeah. over there, so I'm gonna bump this on bottom. All right. You know, sometimes I forget you're a lefty, Bob. Mm-hmm. How hot you're running right now? Around feels like a hundred and five or so. Hundred and five, okay. Nice. I can't tell. What's the machine on? The machine's on 97. About 97 right now. And then right about there is where I like to go ahead and rest, go ahead and rest the cup and just take walk a walk. Through. Now I see that you have that landing on there. It's still burning the wall is really good. Yeah, it's flowing in there for sure. There's something about me resting the cup on here and walking and feeding it on the inside. It just feels more comfortable to me. I can relax. Closing up a little bit. Yeah. Actually, I'm closing up a lot. You want to turn it up some more? No. Juice me up with a piece of filler wire over there, my brother. Gotcha. So when that tightened up over there on my side with that fit, um, what I was doing was actually pushing and rotating on the wire. Yeah. And to me, you know, again, I couldn't see it as well, but it felt like it was going in. Exactly. And I'm kind of doing the same thing here. I get up here on top and it's more of a a lay wire type yeah lay wire type yeah because gravity plays right and then you know you know when you're in 5g uh you got to speed up yeah most definitely otherwise you're gonna leave big old hangy down thing yeah most definitely beautiful like it Did it go in there good oh yeah nice. yeah went in there we real good gotta get the old flashy light in there <laughs> You know, we're doing a lot of stuff in position. You got to leave that window in there. But yeah. you know, when you're on bottom, you can't leave those. Exactly. Can't leave an edge. That's like the worst repair. Exactly. You had some videos on repairs. I mean, that was that was slick information. I appreciate that. The Thank cold you. wire, the so, uh, cold wire, like suck. a fusion, uh, suck back. Yeah. And uh, that is good stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because those, you know, when you get down here. Those are tough repairs. Mm -hmm. This stuff up here is easy, you know, mm -hmm. because you, again, you got that gravity exactly, thing. But exactly. Man, when you got to grind out down on oh, bottom, yeah. I've it's seen, a, hey, I've seen pain. guys grind out a perfectly good weld up here. 
to stick the wire all the way down yeah. so they can get that reinforcement in there. Exactly. Otherwise, when you know, when you come right up to the good part, you make your repair, you leave that little pucker mark in there and it's sunk in. Exactly. Reshoot the x-ray, what do you got? It's still sunk in. Mm -hmm. So that was really good information. That was a good that, video. Thank you. So, <clears throat> you know, again, we've got two different styles going on here. I still can't get my light right. <laughs> oh. It's in there, Bob. Ah. Uh, I think it looks great, you know. The so. old man can still weld a little bit. <laughs> okay, so I went ahead and finished my whole half. You know, again, you know, you, you're hanging on to it. You do the three finger thing. To me, it's always been comfortable and quick where I just rested a thumb, you know, until yeah. I got up to a little bit. Actually, I, I was clear up here because I had to get past the uh, fit there, whatever, but I'll come up off there a little bit actually switch hands mm -hmm. you know I, it's that bottom it's you, that you bottom. gotta have that confidence you, you know and that's the deal the comfortability how many times sure. how many times have you started out on bottom and it's like you strike the arc and you camp out and you camp out and mm -hmm. nothing's happening exactly. you know and then what happens you get instant porosity yeah, exactly. it's exactly. like you got a couple of seconds hit it and go get your pool started mm -hmm. get that tie in and get that mm -hmm. bead started Start going to town. and that's why i will come up a couple of inches on the bottom switch hands and come off the other side a little bit, come back over here and probably finish this whole side. But so, you know, to me, I'm resting the thumb on there. I come up a little bit and then I'll just walk the cup the rest That's of the way. way out. Okay, the so, way. you know, my side had the root face mm -hmm. at about 1 16th and I think I was welding at less amperage than you were. It's funny how that played out, isn't it? I know. And uh, we both we're both getting reinforcement. Exactly. We'll, we'll get we'll reach in there and shoot some B-roll. Yes, sir. So we still have your bridge tack on this side, which I will gladly take out for you, my brother. Now, now uh, keep this in mind, guys and girls. Uh, he had a root face, okay. He was running around 95 to 100 amps max, okay. Me, I was running at 110 amps with no root face with the feathered edge with the feathered edge okay so you might be thinking to yourself okay so if he has a feathered edge he has to run colder oh mm -hmm. well, you know if he has a landing he has to run hotter so it's funny how that played out so and a lot of times you do and i mean you know you recognize things you know by position there's a lot of times when i feel really comfortable i'm looking from the top oh, side yeah, i'm actually seeing the seeing arc everything. and the pool mm -hmm. at the same time the rod and everything is this well, one right? i didn't feel too confident so i had to kind of get down there with it and ride That's it fine. out but you know and then you get up here and go so i did have that one spot that was actually narrow over yeah, here i seen that yeah you know and then i so that that in itself presents yet another little technique of the the lay wire type thing where it's just kind of laying in there until I got past it and then I shot the wire back up here exactly. from the inside. Exactly. So let me grab that face shield and grinder and I'll get you prepped I'll up, get brother. Set up here, brother. Appreciate you. You gonna work some more magic for me here, brother? Yes, sir. We'll see you coming off there, heating up that leading edge. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, feather that? Yes, sir, I feathered it. Okay. Because I remember taking the bridge tack out. I didn't touch it. I didn't know if you wanted it to, uh, if you're just going to remelt. You're running about 90 amps there, brother. Yeah, right now I am. Yeah. Right now I am. You know why I turned it down? Hmm. The pipe's hot. Oh, pipe you, oh hot. you turned the machine down. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't, I wouldn't. I stepped away for just a second there. You went ahead and turned down. Yeah, the pipe gets superheated. That makes a big difference. I think a lot of viewers need to know that too, especially like when you go to throw a cap on and you gotta let things cool off a little bit if you want it to weld most the same. Most definitely, most definitely. Because if you don't, it'll come back at you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. There he goes. 
You want, oh, you're taking a little walk now, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know why? Because your fingers got hot. My fingers got real hot. When I tie in, I like to warm it up to tie in real good right here. So you made a nice transition in here on the inside. Yes, sir. Up right up. And you kept going past where I quit by three quarters of an inch. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot, you know, a lot, I've seen a lot of people do that. Yeah. They come right up and they bump in, they think they're done. Yeah. And so, you know, look at my fist. Got a couple, got a little void canyon in there. Yeah. And that's what their root does too. Yeah. And then they wonder, God, how did I do that? You know, me, I like to go up, if it's a tack or a tie-in like that, I come up around it. And then I start heating the whole thing up where it's like a hole, mm -hmm. back up, add wire, keep going exactly. and, and lace on through it and it tends to make that good blend and transition in there which you did a little yes. slight bump at the top but hey you know what yeah. everything is within tolerance oh yes sir so you know that little bitty variation is way better mm -hmm. than leaving that yeah, void exactly. in there so exactly. all right so let's regroup on this thing let's talk about it you had no root face you had feathered edge on feathered your edge. side you come up off guys. of there exactly. rolling out about 110 amps at first. At, at, really, first. at first, 110 at first. Amps I came nice in behind back. you. I had the root face on my side, mm -hmm. about 116th. I switched back up, came in here, same size wire, but I was actually welding a little cooler mm -hmm. than you were amperage wise. Amperage I think wise. I was down like what, 90, 95? 90, 95, 100 max. Okay. It was going up and down, up and down. A I was little bit. The I had, yes, you know, again, the, and so we both have reinforcement. You know, we're well, this thing is both. It's in there on it's both in sides. There in both ways. So and so, you know, I've, we, both of us have read viewer comments. We were talking about this yes, at dinner last definitely. night. You know, sometimes we get dogged, and I understand shops as far their as far as their procedure. They're saying, you know, hey, we get, we do feathered edge here. We don't do <clears throat> any root face at all on TIG piping, and that's cool. I understand that, but mm -hmm. man, for people to say that's the only way to do that's it. That's the only way. Yeah. That's, There's that's, so many other ways of doing things. There is. You know, the last thing is you leave a thin root in there and you come back in with, a, with another, like you have to go straight to low hydrogen. Mm -hmm. What's the worst thing that can happen? Oh, it's going to blow through or suck, suck back. Yeah, that is the is. worst. So that's why we like to get that reinforcement. But, uh, Good stuff. We need, to, we need to dial up here and do some other stuff. I always like this comparison of techniques. Yes, most you definitely. Know? And I think it's very interesting. It's very interesting, you know, because uh, like they say, they try to bash... Sometimes, you know, no landing, landing. I prefer this, I prefer that. Right. But we just tested it, me and you. And yeah. uh, the camera guys are gonna come in here right now, they're gonna show you the inside and it came out, it came out good, man. Yeah. So, so uh, we showed a technique here, two different techniques of, of your style, my style, my fit, your fit and exactly. everything. And part of mine, I got into a deal where I just had to do a little I mean, I was kind of forced to do a little laywire, closed up a little bit. We're going to bring Mr. Mike Beecher in, and he's going to show What's us that on, exact technique. That's his preference. He likes to do that. So, uh, again, feathered edge, no face, mm -hmm. and yes, you have tightened your gap up to like a loose 332, just mm -hmm. barely an eighth. You're, yep. you're not, you're not able to put the wire in there. Correct. Yes, okay. Right. So this is like your preferred method. Yes, sir. And so. Uh, same setup, same amperage. No, wait a minute. You changed. You're you're down to. Uh, you're going to go at 95 amps. Yep. All okay. the way 95. Yep. No less. No higher. Might depends what the puddle's going to do. Okay. If there's key okay. holes, I'm going to back out a little bit. Right. and it Blows through. All okay. Right. So, so nice, this will nice. be interesting. We'll see. I mean, this is again yet another contrast of another style here. Okay. So, uh, we're getting ready to fire up. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it to Let's it, it, man. Mike, that's like automatic, man. You're just kind of, kind of rolling along, breaking the walls yeah. down. Rolled right up through that tack.
Now he's running at 95 amps. Yeah. It's not had, going any higher, not any less. Yeah, has been all the way. Yeah. Now these are other people's preferences as well, you know. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, whatever works for you. I think this is a good way to, to, start, to off. Uh, start out. Yeah, start off, yes. Because on plate, you start off with TIG on plate uh, and the yeah, 1G absolutely. position. Absolutely. Especially, uh, especially 2G, the mm. horizontal, that's like everybody's yes. least favorite and they fight it. And what is it called? Horrible zonal? Ho horrible zonal, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's like the cool way to learn it because, yeah. you know, you get comfortable, you get comfortable walking, you just kind of roll up in there and lightly put yep. the filler wire in the groove all the time. All the time, yep. That's correct. Now, the only thing I notice about this technique and fit up is it to me it just kind of lays in mm -hmm. a little flat yeah i mean the reinforcement yeah it lays in a little so you got to be careful when you do your hot pass because right. it might suck back but then again some people like to turn it up maybe five yeah maybe ten spend more time spend more in time there. in there spend more so time in go. the bevel face exactly instead of right <coughs> in the middle of the, uh, middle of the weld suck it back tied in pretty good up top there you go sweet Kind of like automatic. Automatic. Just roll it up in there. I noticed he was hanging on to that filler wire with his yeah. thumb, and I do that a lot. Me, just sit mm -hmm. there and just fly. So, so did you? You had a tack over here that you rolled right through. Did you had had you feathered those edges, um, or filed them, or what did yeah, you do? I usually to, file the edges. Okay. And then when I'm coming into it, I basically angle my filler wire a lot towards me. All right. Okay. And I'm basically going in slow and make sure I'm like. Uh, pushing the filler wire into the uh, root. Okay. And like then pause when I'm coming on to the tack. Okay. And try just, to get it is there in is there a certain degree on your on your rod angle? Like when you're coming from. I'm going from the like bottom. yeah. When I start approaching the tack, I come in and come up. Oh, uh, got you. Tack, okay. But when gotcha. I'm laying it, I lay a lot of angle, oh, okay. but not too much angle. Not it too much. In there, it you know, out through. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting for sure. Nice. Quick. Simple. Yet another way to do it. Yeah, there's you know? another way, you know, so there's three ways. Land, no land, lay wire. Yeah. Back feeding, lay wire, you know, it's Fit. whatever. Yeah, so exactly. many variables. Mm -hmm. And you know, once again, you get in the field, uh, what are you going to get? You know, you, you're not going to get the same fit all not, the time. That is you're never going to get the same fit. You got variations in cut. Mm -hmm. Some of them are nice and straight. Some exactly. of them are kind of wavy, like the old French fry carrot thing. Mm -hmm. Looking at you know, I mean, you just get all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, got to keep an open mind. I really like that for, for that quick, simple. Yeah. You know, get used to TIG, get used to that amperage. Yes. I thought that was a. I thought that was a good run. Thank all you, right. Mike. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. yeah that you. was that was fun. I'll definitely get it again. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, guys. All right. Hoping we're finding this educational. Please stay current with the uh, with the channel and everything. Subscribe to Weld.com. Subscribe to WeldTube. Tube. Yeah. Subscribe, guys. Uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, squint. I'm not going to ask you what happened in the airport last night. No. Why you had all those uh, air marshals and stuff. There's around. no need for all that. Okay. <laughs> well, let's prep some. Uh, let's prep some tubes here. Why am I moving all over the place? Is here? it tight? What'd you do, Hamar? Moving everywhere, man. Jeez. I think that's tight. No, you you set me up, man. didn't you? How? Uh, maybe. <laughs>